The Region 8 News election special starts right now. We start tonight with election team coverage across Region 8. We have Journey Taylor and Katie Woodall live bringing you the latest on the last few hours of voting. Let's go to Journey Taylor who is live in Jonesboro with a look at how things are going. Journey. Yes, well, traffic has been consistent here at Walnut Street Baptist Church. One poll worker telling me since this morning, it's been fairly quiet. People seen about five minutes when it came to their wait time, but that wasn't the case at Parker Park Community Center. Poll workers there tell me that when the doors opened at 730 this morning, the line continued out of the building to help with the wait time. They added two voting machines. However, shortly after another two machines stopped working, they were able to get a worker over from the election annex and those problems were resolved quickly and right before I headed out this afternoon around 2 30 Parker Park had a count of 410 people who voted there on election day that number almost doubled here at Walnut Street Baptist Church about 3 30 p.m. 812 people have voted right behind me here on election day and I'm sure that number will increase as more people get off and as a reminder the polls do close at 7 30 today at Walnut Street Baptist Church, I'm Journey Taylor, Region 8 News. Journey, thank you. Now we go to Katie Woodall in Poinsett County with how the day is going there. Katie. Diana, I'm live in Poinsett County here at the community building in Truman, where a steady stream of people have been coming in all day long. Now, since I got here around two, the parking lot has stayed full with voters constantly coming in. I've seen voters of all ages coming in today, and I actually spoke with a 102 year old voter. His name is Oscar Williams. He's been voting since 1936. The only time he hasn't voted was during World War II. Williams said he encourages everyone to exercise their right to vote but said it's important to know what you're voting for. Uh, study, uh, study the government, uh, and, and then vote each, each time you get a chance. Poll workers tell me this has been a very busy election day and even early voting saw bigger numbers than previous elections. A lot of voters I've spoken to are here for city council races and of course the presidential race. Now if you haven't had a chance to vote yet, there is still time. Polls are open until 730. For now live in Truman, Katie Woodall, Region 8 News. Katie, thank you. This was the scene this morning in Brooklyn at the Brooklyn Baptist Church. Voters were practicing social distancing and wearing masks. Sheriff of the Brooklyn Election Procedure, Carol Ryan, said people were lined up before they opened and the voter turnout was heavier than normal. I want everyone to know that it is fair, it is honest, we are well trained. Brooklyn Baptist Church is located at 200 North Oak Street. Polls close at 7.30 p.m. Over in Greene County, the polls were steady at the fairgrounds. There were no issues at this location and everyone was in and out pretty fast. 60% of registered voters in the county have already cast their ballots. Election Commissioner Paulette Parker has been working at the polls since 2006. Parker says she's never seen the number of voters come out and vote. We've done everything we can to make uh, voting easier and to make it um, uh, less stressful for you to go through the lines and such as that. And I just say, please get out and vote and, and express your uh, opportunity to get to do that because you never know when that's what our veterans fought, fought for and you never know when that's going to be the end of it. Voting is still going on at the fairgrounds in the commercial building right now. You have until 730 to get out and cast your ballot. Well, after months of bitter back and forth between candidates, Election Day is finally here. Leaving Americans waiting to see who will be president for the next four years. ABC's Andrew Dimebird is tracking the latest from Washington. After a record more than 100 million early and mail-in voters cast their ballots, millions more now heading to the polls on Election Day. I would have swam across the lake of alligators to vote today. This isn't about one person or, or Joe Biden or Donald Trump. This is about America. A long, bitter battle between President Donald Trump and opponent former Vice President Joe Biden coming to a close. Biden still campaigning today in Pennsylvania. If you haven't gotten everybody out, 
Get them out. Get them out. Biden heads into Election Day ahead in most major polls. But this morning, a confident President Trump saying he expects to do better in the Electoral College than he did in 2016. We're going to have a great night and we're going to have much more importantly, we're going to have a great four years. On Monday, the candidates making their final push in the battleground states. The power to change this country is in your hands. This does not look like a second place finish. The candidates' campaign strategies about as different as the candidates themselves, both envisioning two distinctly different futures for America, as the country is still gripped by the COVID-19 pandemic. COVID-19 cases in the U.S. climbing past 9 million, hospitalizations on the rise in every battleground state. Trump telling supporters the end of the coronavirus is near. That ends the pandemic, and it will end anyway. They hate it when I say we're rounding the corner. It's going to end anyway, but the vaccine will make it go a lot quicker. Biden, as he's done throughout the trail, hammering Trump for his handling of the virus. We're going to beat this virus. We're going to get it under control. And the first step, the first step to beating this virus is beating Donald Trump. So far, roughly 100 million Americans have already voted, and experts say it's likely we won't know who wins this election tonight, that in some of these critical battleground states, it could take days to count up the record number of votes. But just because it takes a little bit longer doesn't necessarily mean that there's any sort of election issue. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Stay with Region 8 News through the night, and Wednesday we'll keep you updated on the latest results and analysis. Amanda Hansen will provide special coverage from the Region 8 Digital Desk across our streaming platforms. And Adam Jones and Destiny Quinn will be live Wednesday morning on Good Morning Region 8 with results coming in overnight. And for all the election headlines tonight, visit our website, kait8.com slash politics. Now to an update on COVID-19 in Arkansas. The Department of Health reports 878 new cases, 520 of those cases confirmed, 667 are hospitalized, down 21 from Monday, an additional 18 have died from the virus. The total stands at 2,003 deaths. Craighead County had 38 new cases, Green had 31. Governor Asa Hutchinson gave his weekly COVID-19 briefing today discussing hospitalizations in the state. Despite seeing a reduction in overall new cases, the state is seeing an increase of hospitalizations here in Northeast Arkansas. Officials said last week Northeast Arkansas has seen 112% increase within a month. Bull Ryle of the Arkansas Hospital Association discussed the issue facing hospitals. We're seeing increases across the state, in particular Northeast and Central Arkansas. Hospital bed capacity in northeast and central areas are tight, but the total beds available is not the issue. It is the number of health care workers available to staff the beds. Ryle said 10% of beds have COVID-19 patients, as do 26% of occupied ICU beds, while 31% of ventilators are used by COVID patients. Jonesboro police are looking for a suspect in a bank robbery this morning. Police were called to Bancorp South on Parker Road around 920 due to a hold up alarm. Police arrived within minutes. Canine units began looking in the woods south of the bank. If you have any information about the suspect, contact Jonesboro police at 935-5657. Five, five, we had perfect, perfect weather, weather today. Perfect weather and it brought Ryan in. <laughs> yes, we like that, Ryan. Yeah, it's good to be back in studio for today. Yeah, temperatures today, very nice. We had lots of sunshine. Started out a little on the cool side, but not as chilly as what it was yesterday morning. We're still very nice this evening. We're at 63 degrees here in Jonesboro, 62 in Walnut Ridge. Ash Flats coming in at 71. Look at Mountain View coming in at 75 right now. So that warming trend has begun tonight. Not as cool as the past two nights. In fact, temperatures will be in the mid 40s, maybe even some low 50s as we start out going into the afternoon, a warm afternoon, looking at 70 degrees by 230, 72 by Batesville and uh, 73 in Melbourne as we go into the afternoon by Thursday morning, uh, even a little milder. So each and every day we're seeing the temperatures go up just a little bit. Satellite and radar is completely dry. Just a few little clouds creeping in there through the northwest. Otherwise, we're looking at a mostly clear sky through the evening hours by 8 o'clock down to 54, 53 by 10 o'clock. Coming up, we have even milder temperatures as we go into the weekend and a little bit of rain starting to show up in the forecast. I'll tell you when in just a few minutes.
All right, thank you, Ryan. Just across the river in Tennessee, a Dyersburg man accused of shooting a Department of Correction agent is in custody. Bobby Joe Claybrook Jr. was wanted for second degree murder. TDOC officials say Claybrook shot Joe Fry multiple times while serving a warrant at his home. As of last night, Fry was in stable condition and in good spirits. As many of you stepped into a polling place over the past couple of weeks, You've noticed poll workers making sure you get in and out as quickly and safely as possible. Logan Whaley takes us to Lawrence County where one poll worker is turning 82 Thursday. It's been a pretty quiet day so far here at Minturn City Hall. Over 50 people out of the nearly 200 that live here have made it out to vote before noon today. Inside these doors are a group of six workers and for the majority of them, they've been working elections together for nearly two decades. So I have a wonderful work crew back here. They're, they're great to work with. Barbara Sawyers has been helping with elections at Minturn since 2001. She grew up in the Lawrence County town. We moved here when I was six. And now Barbara turns 82 on Thursday. She says the community is her favorite part about volunteering. Get to visit and get to see people I hadn't seen for, since last election. It's nice just to get to see everybody. For this group, helping out with elections in Lawrence County is a family affair. Those in the room tell me family members are working at polls all over the county, including Alicia, Walnut Ridge, and Hoxie. As for the group right here in Minturn, they just love working with each other. I like working with the people and then I get to visit. We get to laugh and joke and, and I just like doing it. So. And as for Barbara and the group right here at Minturn, they tell me they hope to help out with elections as long as they are able to. In Minturn, Logan Whaley. Region 8 News. Good story, Logan. Thank you. Next at 5, power is up for grabs in Congress this election day. We'll find out how Democrats are working to expand their majority. And how Republicans are fighting to keep control of the Senate.